Chan 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 My name is Chanda, and I'm an international voiceover in Abu Dhabi. I can be your voice for fashion. When it's time to get the job done, Southern Gents presents the double-breasted pinstripe of excellence. Your voice for cinema. All these years, you lied to me, Alfred. The Batman, only in cinemas March 3rd. Your voice for beverages. Introducing... The Jupiter Cocktail, shaken, not stirred. For international standard voiceovers, reach out to me on Instagram at Call Me Vocal. Cool, yet another episode, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls. Um, we've had so many people, Kalinga, that have told us that we did not have a balance. We had too many guys, and now we've got too many girls. Right, so we're trying to create <laughs> that balance. Yeah. And the person that we have today is somebody that have you ever noticed that regardless of whatever episode we release in the comments, not even related, we would get people asking, "So when are you bringing Maria the Z farmer?" Exactly, when are you bringing the Z farmer? And I'm thinking this episode has got nothing to do with farming. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked, we delivered. We delivered. Right. The other thing that people also asked is that I swear less. When we bring Maria on, right? No, no, just in general, oh. because oh, okay. there had been way too many, too much profanity. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna try as much as possible to swear less. Uh, can promise. So but, but on this again, episode, I yeah. think people need to get the fact that, that that's your language. It's about expression, and it's not ZNBC TV, so you can really you, you know can express I mean. yourself. And I said, I said exactly the same thing. Yeah. You want a person who wears a suit? You want a person with polished English? What Jimmy K? In it. <laughs> I speak how I speak. Be you, do you, bro. So, what episode? What number are we on? Twenty. Um, this should be twenty-five. Are we even reading our own? Twenty-six. Eh? Twenty. Uh, twenty. Whatever. No, it can't be twenty-seven, Martin. Can't be. Now look at Maria looking at us like, okay, what? Can we start this show already? <laughs> no, it's fine. You're not. <laughs> no, this is how we do it. <clears throat> yeah. It is uh, episode twenty-six. 26. 26 with Maria, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the clue is 25. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, episode 26. Hey, man. Like we're trying to do a show here. <laughs> <laughs> episode 26. We have yes. got Maria, the Z Farmer. Welcome, Maria. Thank you. Ba, 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 ba. Guys, you need to buy me equipment for this. Drum. You need to buy me equipment, man. The drum. <laughs> Where's the mic? No, she, guys, please, Martin, Sally, please buy me equipment. I just need to press a button. I right. Ba, 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 and we have all the Saudi yes. fans. Yeah. It's been Look a long Maria time Look at me like, what the I hell? Know, thank you. You know, the craziest Thanks. thing, the craziest <laughs> yeah. thing is, contrary to what you were saying, the, the very first call that I made to her, she yeah. picked up and she agreed. You know why I thought Maria wouldn't make it? Because there's a post on Instagram where she says, guys, uh, I'm going through so much and I will not be doing any interviews. I've been getting calls. So I thought we we're going to fall in that bracket of interviews yeah. that she's not going to what do. What happened, Maria? How did we become so lucky? Yeah. It was just destiny because that particular day when you called, my PA had just left the phone on my table <laughs> and I saw it vibrating and I was like, should I pick it up or not? Uh -huh. And somebody just said, pick it up, pick it up. So I picked it up. Right. Usually I leave my phone, the, that particular phone with the PA. All right. So we're going to cut this right. response out. Uh -huh. The response you're supposed to give is because is that Z podcast. Ah, right. Okay. Right. So okay. let's do let's do this again. So Maria, how did we become so lucky that you agreed to come on the podcast? Because it's that Z podcast. Yeah. Right. Answer. Oh, here's a better response though. Uh -huh. I am the Z farmer, and yeah. you guys are that Z, Z podcast. podcast. So there's, a lot, there's a lot of Z vibe happening here. Let's there do this. Yeah. 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 One time. How have yeah. you been though? How's the farm? Good, they're good. You said there was a bit of uh, an issue at, at your farm today. Yeah. Yeah, on farm one, we were at farm three. So farm, farm one. Farm one to farm. Look at you. How, she's got so many farms. Oh my she goodness. calls them farm one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> the last person who did that was you, Hefnia, with his girlfriends. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you just had to make that uh, yeah. relationship. So Farm 3, what happened yeah. at Farm 3? Yeah. Uh, farm 1. Farm, farm one. 1. There was a fire on Farm 1. Well, my manager started the fire at 3. Just, and then didn't tell anyone and then left with me to go to Farm 3. So. Has he been fired now? No, he no no he he was burning the bush on purpose so that we could clear because tomorrow we need to go in with a tractor. Uh-huh. But there's another manager, a, a supervisor who comes at the manager who was supposed to take over that fire and he didn't. For some reason, no one saw it because the farm is quite big. So one of my neighbors is the one that called me to say that there's a fire and it's going into our it's going to the next farm. Damn. Somebody needs to lose their job. Yeah, so I'm gonna charge them tomorrow in the morning. They'll they'll pay. How much of how much of the salary are they losing? Uh, probably maybe a quarter. I am a whole twenty five percent. Well, yeah, twenty five. So 25%. they must be earning quite a lot of money if they're only getting twenty five percent of their salary uh, salaries cut. Um, they must be. It's, earning it's quite not a, bit. a lot, but I need to I need to teach them something that they need to be very vigilant, especially the the guards, because what happens is that the workers leave the farm at four, and the fire started burning at I think about four. we left farm one at four to go to farm three. So at four o'clock, the guards should be around the farm to see what's going on. If mm. there's a big fire like that, they should know. They should know, right? They should have seen the smoke. And they least. didn't. And they didn't. Maybe because they're on the other side of the farm, but still. So if somebody was out there just plucking shit, they wouldn't. Have, they wouldn't. Have they seen wouldn't that too, know. Right? Yeah, they would not know. And yeah, they need get, to lose their job too. Yeah, exactly. No, the guards just need to be a bit more vigilant. Yeah, and if you don't exact punishment, it's just a precedence. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody relaxes. Wait, wait, so how many farms have you got? <laughs> wow how big how big how big are we talking of farms here um farm one is 18 hectares Damn. farm two is 174 hectares i don't even that's like the size of lusaka 174 hectares yeah i have to go around with a car i can't walk around that farm what sometimes i have to fly a drone but i crashed my drone about uh maybe three months ago i crashed it uh one of the blades broke so i have to buy a new uh, drone do, do you fly your own drone yeah, I do. But my neighbors reported me. Why? Uh, they said did, that did they I was spying p- on them. Spying on them? Wow. Yes, on Farm 1. Because Farm 1 is small. So if, when I'm, if I'm flying a drone... And the, the people, the villagers get scared of the drone. They think it's witchcraft. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can, I can get that. But the yeah. other people that said so, you were spying on them... sometimes, like, I fly it really low. Like, there's a time... There's an old lady who was doing Malasha on Farm 2. Yeah. So that 174 hectares, so I was flying the drone and I could see her on the drone. So I, w- I put the drone like really close to her head, like almost here. <laughs> and she was running away and she came back to, you know, to the main, like wh- wh- where the main place is, like where the house is. And she's like, no, the, you guys want to kill me. <laughs> but she was doing Malasha in our farm. We get those. Yeah. Where they just go in a corner and start cutting trees uh-huh. and making an oven for Malasha. They just do it. So I, I flew the drone really close to her, then I flew it away, and then I came oh, back to again. scare her. And, yeah, oh. and she kept running. The poor old lady. <laughs> I like I like her kind of petty. Oh. I like her kind of petty. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, yeah. wait. I'm, I'm a little um, I'm I'm stuck on the neighbors that thought you were spying on them. What do they yeah. do? I was uh, about to ask the same thing. Are they weed farmers or what? Why would you be spying? <laughs> Why, Why would they feel they're spying on them? Yeah. yeah I think it's just. I think maybe because I fl- sometimes I'd fly the drone around and it just passes the fence, you know, and I'm coming back again. Maybe they thought I was spying on the fact that maybe they're doing chickens. It was near their poultry. So I just got a letter from the aviation authorities that can you can you get a license? You no, know, but then you know what? You need a license to fly a drone. But, but that's the thing, though, because yeah. about four years ago, I wanted to start a... Uh, a medical <laughs> drone delivery service. Mm. There's one in Rwanda where they use drones to um, uh, for blood transfusion, etc. Yeah. And I wanted the civil aviation. And at that point, I don't know if it has changed now. At that point, they did not have uh, specific licenses for drones. So if you wanted to get a license for a drone, you'd have to have the same license as an aircraft. Damn. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Here Is it too. still like that? Yeah. So they still they still don't have. Mm-hmm. where drones can fit in. Yeah. So imagine that where you have to get the same license that an aircraft gets. 
Mm. It's like the radio industry and how they can't regulate podcasts like ours, which are just on the internet. You know what I mean? So they're really yeah. fighting right. to yeah. find a way of making us pay right. for licenses to run podcasts like this on the internet. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah, but, but they're working on it. I actually met they? someone from yeah. I actually met someone someone from their. Uh, one of these regulatory bodies and they're like we're actually trying to find a way of making you guys pay for these things. No, but this lives on the internet. That's the, that's the problem. So how can they shut it down? The same problem you guys are having with the uh, drones. You know what I mean? No, I don't yeah. have that problem anymore. I just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, we yeah. are thrilled to have you on That's a Podcast. Thank you so and much. And for reasons like we gave earlier, we, yeah. we were very convinced you're not going to accept doing this. But, yeah. you know, it, it's interesting. It was interesting to find out that you come from a very well respected family of businessmen yeah. who are of Greek origin. Yes. Greek origin. Greek. 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 Yeah, my dad was Greek. Maria Zalumis. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I don't think many Zambians or many of us you know, know this? about your Greek origins. Yeah, and I've actually been there. Greece? I'm, yes. I'm are all the Michigan. buildings in Greece white and blue? No, that's in Santorini. Like all the photos I ever see of Greece are white and no, no. white and blue. But, yeah. but my but my village in Greece is actually on Ooh, an island, you. and you have to park your car down and walk into the village. So there's no actual cars parked there. I'm from a place called Mytilene. My dad took me there when I was ten. Mm-hmm. Please yeah. t- tell us more about your family history. Okay. Yeah. So um, my grandfather and his two brothers came from Mytilene, Greece. They were trading in spices and other commodities. And they came that by was ship. very valuable. Yeah, it was. And that that's was actually the why the white people part of why the white people came to Africa. Yes, yes. Spices. Yeah, spices. So he's they they docked off in Durban and they were they walked through South Africa trading and through Zimbabwe. And when they got to southern province, when they got to Choma, um, they decided to set up shop there and they fell in love with these three Tonga girls. So my grandfather fell in love with a Tonga girl and then his two other brothers fell in love. And they all set up shops there. And when they set up their shops, um, yeah, they started their families. And that's what makes us a Loomis family. And my dad was really, really um, intentional about teaching us about our Greek history and basically where we come from. So every Zalumis is related. We all originate from these three brothers. Wow. And they were all entrepreneurs. They were traders. My granddad then moved from Mapanza, exactly where it was. It was in Mapanza. Um, and he went to Ndola, and he set up shops there. And he actually owned half of Ndola. Mm-hmm. And when he got to Ndola, um, he was so strict with money that if someone, someone came into the shop or tried to steal, he would really beat the living daylights out of him so should. when he walked in Ndola, they would all like all the street people and whatever would be walking behind him going don't know namali don't know namali <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean so, don't, steal. Know, don't know namali means like uh beat up for money it's chilapalapa mm-hmm. yeah so he'd be walking and my dad was would explain these things my dad was only like seven or eight right and then his businesses fell down and he decided to go back to greece so my dad was in greece for about three years and he was building up capital again. And we, when he came back uh, from Greece, my grandma thought he'd left. So she he found her pregnant with somebody else's child. Ooh. Yeah. And um, he still loved her all the same. He says, no, it was my fault. I went for three years. So he accepted. And so in my dad's family, there <clears> was <throat> seven white, like colored kids, proper mm-hmm. colored kids. And the eighth kid was black. And they existed very well together. Wow. But my wow. granddad got killed in the end and he died a very painful death. He, How? So he went to drink and he had a dispute with one of his cousins over some money. I don't know. He did crook teach. I don't know who crooked who. I don't know the details. But as he was walking home from from drinking, they beat him up and conscious. They put him on the railway line and then a train came and passed Ooh. over him. Where was this? In Greece? In Dola. Oh, in Do- here? In- yeah. Man. In Ndola. So he, I actually know where he's buried and the house which he owned is still there in Ndola. Over in money. Yeah, over money, yes. I was saying to Kalinga earlier, two things that will make people not yeah. see eye to yeah. eye is women and money. Yes. Yeah. Do you, so. do you think you inherited your sense of business from your family bloodline? Definitely, I did. Uh, you know, one thing my workers tell me is that, ah, Madam Mulina, you know, you've you've got white blood. That's why you farm like this. <laughs> and I say, you think like a white person, and I'm like, nah. But I I do I did inherit the entrepreneurial part from my dad. My dad was in transport business for a long time. He owned trucks, and then he. 
he decided to start making soap at some stage. I remember when I was growing up, he'd always, you know, be doing something different. And then he tried law. He became a lawyer. And I think he only practiced for five years. And he was a hopeless lawyer. God <laughs> rest his soul. And then yeah. he went into farming. And he was just farming like on a quarter piece of Tuzini one. It wasn't even... When I got to Tuzini one, it was a complete bush. It was just a small piece that he was farming. So he had entrepreneurial skills. But yeah. I don't think he he really... You know, how can I put it? I don't think he he, he really like explored. He used to think quite small. Like I, I would ask him, I'd want to ask him if I ever had a chance to ask him again. Why did you buy such a small farm? 18 hectares is too small because now I've finished. The, the land is is yeah. done. Like yeah. it's farmed wire to wire. Mm -hmm. So why would you buy such a small piece of land? But then he thought it was big. Maybe so, back in the day. So growing up, where did you grow up? I grew up here in Osaka. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see you had a pretty we've got we've got a pretty thorough producer who does extremely well in research. All oh, right. Yeah. You went to Australia. I know Kalenga will like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you studied, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually grew up on a winery. I grew up here in Lusaka, but uh I did three years of my high school in Chile mm -hmm. in Curico. Chile, and like across the pond, Chile. Chile, as in South America, South America. across America. the pond. Yes, yeah. across the pond. Yeah. Wow. So I can speak hmm. Spanish. That's my second language. Um, I grew up in. It was a. It was kind of like a. It was like a fake life. Why do I say that? We had horses. We had maids. We used to live in a castle. Wait, hold on. Back up. A hacienda. Before, before we get there, because this is getting yeah. interesting. I so you. So you grew up in Lusaka. School. Yeah, we grew, yeah I grew up in Lusaka. So primary, secondary was this yes. was this here in yeah, Lusaka. Yeah, primary, secondary was in Lusaka uh -huh. up to grade nine. Uh -huh. When I finished my grade nine, I went to South America to Chile to do grade ten and eleven. What? So your dad was still in the, <clears throat> the various transport, etc., yes. etc. Et yeah. So yeah. that funded the entire. Um, um. So my mom belonged to an organization called the Humanist Organization. I had made friends with a South American lady who didn't have kids. How did you make friends with her? She made friends. I don't know where she met. Oh, you said your mom or my, you? My mom. My okay, mom. cool. So um, there was an exchange program mm -hmm. for me to go to South America for school and mm -hmm. for um, another student to come here. But that student didn't end up coming. So I went. And when I went, I couldn't speak the language mm -hmm. because it's complete Spanish. Like nobody knows English. So I had to go through the Spanish lessons. And then I was learning chemistry, physics in Spanish. Damn, damn. It was very hard. Como like chemistry, yeah, chemistry is already that. chemistry is already yeah. crazy as it is. And it's exactly. Spanish. Now and imagine that Spanish. in Spanish. Yeah, it was quite it literally was, Greek. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Hard. It was really yeah. hard, and just the life we led was, you know, would live in this castle, and our homestay. Our mom used to paint. She had a she, she had a parlor where they would paint plates. You know, like the decorations mm -hmm. on plates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they she had an oven that was that that was her has her life and we would jump in the car in the morning and the oldest kid would drive to school i was the oldest kid i was only 14 at the time i think 14 or 15 so i was made to learn how to drive and then this would go around the whole farming block like picking up the rest of the kids so the way the the winery worked was that there are seven brothers and sisters and all of them are farming so it's it's very big it's like the size of lusaka Damn. and then wow yeah. That's the size of the winery? Yeah, that's... This, okay, not Lusaka. Maybe half of Lusaka. Jesus, that's, that's still big, huge, that's, that's still huge, though. Yeah, maybe yeah. if you take Roma, Chamba Valley, Nguerere, um, like the whole SOS area, mm. all that. That's Zanimone, Yeah. Yeah. So we'd go around the farming block picking up these kids. I would pick them up. So we'd start off in the morning like at 6 would pick up all these kids and then would put them in the car. Then we drive. Then when we reach the police, you just take out your. I had this card that I used to have, like from the winery, like no way the kids of the Astabur Waters. Right, right. And then they'll be like, okay, come, come, go, go, go. Then we'd park the car, then we'd go to school. At lunchtime, we used to go to the grandma's house. The grandma used to live in town. So mm -hmm. we'd drive to the grandma's house for lunch and then would sleep, would be made to sleep. And then at two o'clock, you go back to school. And then at four, you're done. And then you go back to the winery. Right. And then when it's time for harvest, we would all be made to harvest uh, grapes. 
So it'd be given a scissors and then you just be cutting, cutting. I remember there's a day I had so many grapes. I got so sick. You know, when you get it, when you get into a place for the first time, you get excited. so excited. Yeah. Like you're going through this winery and they're just grapes, hanging grapes, grapes. <laughs> you never saw those things in Zambia. Yeah, yeah, I never saw those things in Zambia. So, you know, I was going... I would be going and, you know, the other kids would be eating. But, you know, I was wondering, how come they're not eating so many grapes? And I was just <laughs> eating red grapes. So I would have like blocks of white grapes and then blocks of red grapes. Mm-hmm. And then would have the actual winery with the barrels. And the barrels would be big, big, big barrels. Like from, they even had wine from 1980 something, like as old as me. Wow. Like vintage just like fermenting. wine. Yeah. Yeah. Vintage wine, which, and then there'll be the bottling part. It was, it was a great experience, but I started forgetting how to speak English. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I became so Spanish that I forgot English. So now my parents would call and I'd go, I'd start, hello, how are you? Uh, you're no, no, you're no puedo. No, no blah, habla, blah. no habla inglés. No habla inglés. <laughs> and then my mom was like, oh no, she has to come back. So <laughs> that was the end of I'm that. not about to put up with this bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> your parents yeah. were, the, your parents were speaking to you. With, what TV show can yeah. I think of in English? And you were in Telemundo the whole time. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, no hablo inglés. Like, so how long were you, were you there for? Uh, two years. Two years. Two in years. Australia? Uh, 12 years. Kalinga, how long were you in Australia for? I did, did I come up with an Australian accent? Why are you asking this? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, how long were you in Australia for? A week. <laughs> <laughs> did you like it though? <laughs> Brilliant. I'm going to live there. Really? I'm the, moving yeah, to Australia. Yeah. I love the place so much. Yeah, it's so nice. It is. Yes. We it. know that you love Australia love so, much so much because man. you have said know, right? it a million <laughs> freaking times. Because you keep bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> I bring it yes. up. <laughs> Shit. I actually so, want to buy a house in Australia. It's a brilliant That's place, man. The so, vibe is just right. Where, where in Australia were you? I lived in Brisbane. Oh, okay. Yeah, I lived in Perth for a bit. Then I moved to Brisbane. So what did you What did you do? What were you I doing did, in Australia? So, so, so first I did a, uh, I tried to do a Bachelor of Finance and Marketing and I failed horribly. Kal- Kalinga would love that. You know why? <laughs> yeah. Because like, you dropped out of college. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing he keeps horribly. bringing up. You see, you see what I mean? He yeah. keeps bringing these things up. Shots fired today. I'm coming back for you on this one. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. My finance. Parents, well, my parents wanted to wanted me to do more and I just hated reading and just sitting down and reading. I used to see my mom and dad doing submissions and they'd be waking up at four to read. I'm just like, ma, this is not my portion. And then I wanted to do, so after I failed, um, I wanted to do medicine. But at the time, the the, the school fees were too expensive. They were $50,000. My parents couldn't Jesus. afford that. Yeah. Oh, what? A term or a year? A year. 50,000. 50,000. Still a lot, though. Yeah. I really wanted to do medicine. I really, really wanted to do medicine. So I thought, okay, let me do nursing. And then I'll do, a, and then when I finish my nursing school, then I can get residency and go into med school. Right. Because then it's free for, if you're a resident mm-hmm. or if you're a citizen. So I did a degree in nursing. And then after I did that, I got employed by St. Andrew's Hospital and I specialized in <clears throat> cardiology. Wow. So everything heart wise, intensive care and coronary care and theater bypass. The beauty and brains. Yeah. And then I did a postgrad in cardiology after I finished. And then I became a nurse, a clinical nurse, which is like a step above a normal registered nurse. So you control the whole shift. You go to any deaths in the hospital if you're on duty. Um, I worked in the the cardiac catheter lab, which is different from the operating theaters. Yeah. That's where we do like pacemakers, stents, mm. um, angiograms, like to see. So I did that that work for about a year. I liked it, but it didn't pay so well. But um, you just go in for theater and you go in anytime, even 2 a.m. in the morning. Mm-hmm. Wow. You sleep with a pager. So you wouldn't really sleep. You go home with a pager, you sleep next to it and, and then if beeping, it goes, yeah. beep, 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 you just get out in your pajamas in the car they only give you 20 minutes to get to the hospital i would be so terrible at that because when i sleep i die a little <laughs> i i am that person when the plane lands and people are like yeah. oh did you feel those turbulences i'll be like what turbulences uh, <laughs> maria uh yeah. s- speaking of hearts elson has got a girl that really likes him but he just okay. can't seem to fall in love with her what do you think hell? he can fix his heart he can fix what? Do you th- think he can fix his heart? Like, is there anything that cardiologists can do for Elson? Elson, just be nice. I'm always nice. I don't know why he's... Maybe bring, maybe uh, because he, he's too straight. Like, Zambian girls don't like straight men. Yeah, but she loves him. He just... You mean you mean straight as in not gay? 
No, no, as in blunt, straight. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that, that I am. I don't know. If, I, I don't I like, like that about you, though. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if it's. Uh, see, I, I wish there were more people, more ladies yeah. like you. Yeah. Because it's very difficult. It's pretty cold out it's, there. It's a confidence thing, though. Right. When a woman Wait. doesn't have confidence, it's a problem. Speaking of all yeah. the stuff that you did, especially because we're gonna come to what you did in farming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, up until what you mentioned, what you did in Australia, did you feel that men, I say men, yeah. in inverted commas, got intimidated by how smart you were because you also seem like somebody who's very assertive? Yeah, did I got you, that. Did you get that? Yeah, even in Australia, I got that. I was the only black clinical nurse. So if I went to a death in intensive care and you have mm. all these doctors you know, bringing their egos and we've got the patient and they're dead and we're trying to bring them back. We're doing CPR. We're doing this. We're doing that. And I'm like, guys, we haven't counted how much adrenaline have you given? It's five milligrams of adrenaline. What, what cycle are we into? We're into the third cycle. This is 15 minutes. Do you just want to leave this person and call it and call it off? Mm. And they'd be like, no, but we haven't gone to the 30 minutes. I'm like, guys, she's 95. Let her go. You know, so I think she would have been more pissed off at 95 for you to try no, to bring, no, her, bring no. her back. You know what I mean? No, there's someone who we brought back. She was very upset. She was See? A, yes. Serious? She was yeah, pissed yeah, off, yeah, right? She was, yeah. really cool. was she also in the 90s and stuff? Yeah, yeah. She was. She was 89. And at we that broke, age, she wants to rest. Yeah. We broke her ribs. She was very upset. You know, when you do CPR, you actually break you can you break people's ribs. I I could feel her ribs cracking as I was going. But you still but you still kept going though. And yeah, and after 15 minutes, <clears throat> she started coughing. 15 minutes and, gone. Yeah, and her sinus rhythm came back. She she, she woke up. And then up. she cursed you guys out. She's like, why don't you let me go? She she you know, when when people come back, they 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 don't they, they're out of it, so they just kind of like start looking at you and you know, start looking at at everyone. But after a day or so, they'll ask you what happened. And right. I asked them what happened. And they say to me that they just it was just dark, black. They went to sleep. I actually wanted to ask about that. Yeah. Have, man, I didn't think that we would be speaking about, about medicine. <laughs> do, yeah. do you believe there's life after death? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's there's um, a, a lady who died when I was working one day who kept saying to me that I can see people are coming to take me. So I really believe that there's life after death. And when somebody dies, you know... Um, you, you feel this presence in the room. Like when I, when I would, oh, by the way, I almost became a mortician at some stage. I'll tell you that story later. So, <laughs> so, so um, I really feel like there's life after death because you, you, you're an immortal being. You need to understand the spiritual side of us. Mm. We're an immortal being. Like sometimes when I'm seated in my farm in a particular corner, I actually feel like sometimes my dad is with me even though he's gone because that was the particular side where he used to farm. So, so yeah, I, I feel like that, but there's a man who, um, who we brought back to life seven times. Every what? time he would go to the toilet, he would die. Huh? Yeah. And that's where people die the most, actually, if you well, got a toilet? cardiac problem and you try and poo, you die. You know who else died in the toilet? Who? Elvis Presley. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I promise you. No, it's because of he the died taking a shit maneuver. You know when you poo. Oh, you like, push. You just... Yeah. So what happens is that it slows your heart rate. So if you've got a heart rate that's already oh, slow, God. so we would bring this toilet to him. This man, <laughs> we would bring the actual toilet to him. There's a toilet. It's a chair. It's got wheels. Yeah. And then it's got like a, a little pot. Yeah, 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 I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'd we'll put him on the toilet, and then would all be waiting. Would we'll first we we'll say, okay, no, no, no. Before you go to the toilet, we bring the trolley. The CPR trolley. It's got everything on there, the pads to to bring, uh -huh. like to shock you and everything. So we'd put the trolley next and then would wait. And then the person would be, someone would be watching the monitor at the main station and also on him. All the doctors would be there. And the minute he'd go, e ah, that's it. He would just lose <laughs> So it. the minute he shits, he'll die. Yeah. <laughs> I bet this guy was so scared to shit. Yeah, shame. And then would start CPR and then he would come back. That's but not even funny, man. It's not even funny. <laughs> on the seventh time, he didn't make it. We went for ages. We're like, guys, let's just let him go. He had cancer of the heart. Shame. 
I've had so many experiences. So many experiences. You don't. You spoke about how you wanted to be a mortician. What's that about? Yeah. Okay. So when I was coming back to Zambia, I thought, what is the business that could really make money? And I had a friend who I used to live with in Australia, whose parents were funeral directors. And when she told me how much money they make a day, I was oh, like, they make a killing. Yeah, she. They made. Excuse the pun. <laughs> yeah, they made like uh, I think it's thirty thousand dollars a day. A day. A day. A day. They did six thousand dollars. Yeah, dollars, not kwacha. Oh, you dollars. got kwacha, and all you needed was fifty thousand dollars for your medical fees for a, a year. Yeah, they make that in a day. They make it in a day. Death wow. is good business, huh? It is. Bad news for us. Good news for you. Yeah. So I thought, okay, let me go to Zambia and find a plot where I can build a funeral home. So I found a plot to build a funeral home. Actually, near just before East Park. Mm-hmm. That was going to be the funeral uh, from, home. From from which direction? Mass media. After Unza, where Prime Joint is. Oh. Um. Mm. That side. Yeah. So wow. I came, I found the plot. Then I, when I went back to Australia, I started training as a mortician. And uh, the first day I went, in fact, I, I kept joking with people. I said, oh, you know, I want to become a mortician and blah, blah. So one night... I remember it was Easter and the morgue was full of bodies. It was packed. Now in Australia, they don't have um, a person guarding the morgue. They just have a uh, alarm, like they've got rays. Mm-hmm. They've any, got the, any movement? Uh, any movement, the alarm goes off. So that particular night <laughs> on the cameras, the nurse manager in charge was called me and she says, um, Maria, there's... Uh, actually, they used to call me Zeleni. That's my middle name. Zeleni, uh, there's some fluid coming out of the morgue. You Can you go and have a look since you want to become a mortician? Uh, no, thanks. And that was like 2 a.m. in the morning. She was too scared to go there. So I said, okay, if you send me with an orderly and maybe someone else, I can go there. So I went there. I opened and we we're trying to tra- tra- trail. Now, the way the morgue is there, it's a room with a Bible and like a dim light, like, like a little chapel. And then there's a curtain. And behind the curtain, there's a, there's a fridge. And the fridge is just a big sliding door. And then in the in the big sliding door, when you open, that's where the trays are and the bodies are there. So this particular fluid was coming from a body bag that was, I think it was one, two, three. I think it was about the fourth body bag on top. So I said, guys, and this lady was 150 kgs. She was big. Damn. I don't even know why they put her on top. Anyway, that day it was full. Because the the funeral directors had closed, it was Easter. Um, so we, so I we 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 I, I we managed to like you know get up, get the body bag down, and it just went boom and it slumped, and then I opened the body bag and this lady was floating in fluid. I don't know what had happened. So I we went with a suction machine. You know, I hope you all know what that is. <laughs> to suck out I know fluid. It from the dentist, yeah. Yeah, so we went with a suction machine. We sucked out all the fluid. Then I took a face towel. I tried to clean her. So I went for the hand. I said, yeah, if I go for her face, I might I might mess her up for, for burial. So let me... So I went for the hand. And immediately I put the face towel on her hand. Her whole skin peeled off. I just said, guys, let's close this. I'm this done. is a done deal. This is not just, me. This is not me. Um, I just put it back. And that's why I understand why morticians smoke a lot of weed. They deal <laughs> with a lot of stuff. Damn. Like a lot of stuff. I, I, then, I, then I tried again to go to another funeral director to train one day. And when I went there, um, they put, a, he had fake eyes, I remember. And this guy had been in an accident and he was putting a fake eye inside to try and they, they work a lot. You know, they do a lot of makeup mm-hmm. to make sure that someone is correct for presentable. Burial. Yeah, yeah, presentable for burial. I was actually quite upset when I saw my they hadn't shaved my dad's beard in the coffin. Do they normally? They're supposed to. They're, they didn't even comb his hair properly. I was just like, what is this? I sh- you should have called me. I'd have done it myself, mm. you know. So, so I wanted to do that business, but my mom discouraged me. She's like, no, people won't be shaking your hand. This is Zambia. Everyone <laughs> Superstitions and all. Yeah. Any relative that dies, they'll all point at you. Right. That, so don't even money. try it. Like you will have lots of money and no friends. <laughs> 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 even I won't come near you. <laughs> oh, shame. <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, that, that, that went down the drain. But I don't know why we look at morticians that way. Like, yeah, all of a sudden, people. become like you're an agent of death, like the Grim yeah. Reaper himself. Right. It's it's yeah. a business. 
it's a business, but they don't live. And it's part life. of medicine and health. I mean, all of us are going to end up in that right. position one day. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't you want somebody like Maria cleaning you up? Of course I would. My point exactly. <laughs> of course I would. <laughs> Even when I'm still alive. Oh, Elson. <laughs> Maria, from cardiology to being yeah. a mortician, you've you've been through so much, and yet yeah. today we talk about the you know, tomato farmer. Your father was a small scale farmer, but did yeah. he ever have dreams of you taking over the farm and turning it into a commercial entity? You know, one thing my dad yeah. did was that he wrote down everything. I've got a folder in my office thick that I discovered when he died. And every dream that he wrote down of his I've accomplished. So he wrote down that he wanted to have 12 hectares of tomato, exactly 12 hectares I've accomplished. He wrote down that he wanted drip irrigation, I've accomplished. He wanted a reservoir, I've accomplished. So he wrote, you know, my dad wrote down so many things. He was the first uh, pioneer of cannabis. He's the one that started the whole, that Zambia should grow cannabis. And everybody thought he was mad at that time. Mm. And I wish he could, I, I wish he could see what we're discussing. Because that's what we're discussing today was hemp industrial hemp and how where we are at with the industrial hemp because it was a very touchy topic last year the licenses were very expensive so you know he he's, he's he had all these newspaper articles which were all cut out and you know it's like he knew he was dying he put everything in a folder he even wrote his speech for his funeral wow. and wrote um where he needs to be buried and his picture and everything he was very organized but my dad lost his memory and he he'd been you know, his memory had gone for about eight years. So we couldn't have a conversation with him for eight years. What, what killed him? Um, he died of pneumonia and then it turned into COVID. So was it him losing his memory? Was that like Alzheimer's? Yeah, he had Alzheimer's. Yes, he did. So in that eight years, you had to introduce yeah. yourself every time you met yes, him? Yes, every time I wow. met him, I'd have to introduce it myself. It was that bad? Yes, I'd say, hi, dad, it's me, Maria. And he'd be like, for me, I'm like, yes, for you, your daughter. Then I'd have to take a picture and show him that this you is together. Me. Yes, and oh, okay. Then he would he would he would get. But you know what? He'd never forgotten my kids, and he never forgot how to pray. Wow! I would hear him praying. The only time I heard him speak is when he prayed. You couldn't have a conversation with him, mm -hmm. but he would pray. He would wow. say, "God bless Maria. God bless Taonga." He knew. All he knew him. your name, but would yeah, forget your face. Yes, he'd forget unless he saw you maybe twice, three, four times every day. Then he go Maria. But if he, if he didn't see you for two days, you'd forget. But he, he got to experience my son, AJ. And AJ would just follow him around and hold his hand. And even, you know, the day before he died, AJ was following him around, holding his hand. And when he went to the hospital, he actually said bye to everyone at home. You know the craziest thing? And yeah. I know Kalengo think I'm making this up. One of the things that has been proven to prevent Alzheimer's yeah. is Viagra. Really, and it's good I for your heart you. too. You know that yeah. we use. Viagra I really feel Elson is making this up. I promise you. Yeah, in cardiology, we use Viagra. I promise you. Look that up. Yeah, it's actually good if you've got a slow heart rate. We prescribe Viagra. Yeah, one. Yeah, but that's Alzheimer's, man. Yeah. So if yeah. you, it, it, it that's significantly that's, reduces that's the chances. That's neuroscience of, right now, right? Yeah. It significantly yeah. reduces yeah. your chances of getting Alzheimer's. Wow. So how much of it are you taking right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You don't know how much you're taking. No, he's asked me how much if you take it every day. So but I said, but, I don't but, know. But, I don't, but, I don't but, even know. He puts it in his food, his drink, so he wouldn't know how much black he's taking. People, yeah. Not a lot of them get Alzheimer's, you know. That. I was yeah. about to say that's a yeah. very light skin disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's a white disease. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. As racist as that sounds. Why why does you why does your computer announce the time, dude? Blind? To be honest, I don't know how to change that setting, eh? <laughs> Every single hour, his computer announces the time. Oh, no, but it's good, though. It's good. It's really I don't know. Good. Martin, please help. <laughs> Maria, um, you, you come from a family that... I, I think any Zambian, you mentioned the name Zalumis, too. It, it rings a bell or two. Yeah. Can you attribute to any of your success to your family name? Yes. <laughs> I can. Can't even deny it, eh? My mom is, yeah. is, is a lawyer. She's a very well-known lawyer. Very famous, yeah. Very famous lawyer. And um, every time someone would ask me, oh, are you related to Mangala Zalumis? I'm like, yeah, that's my mom. And they'll be like, oh, is she your mom, mom? I'm like, yes, I'm her last born. Yeah, she's my mom. And yeah, I, I, I think it has. But 
it's taken me a lot of hard work on your own uh, on my own i should not um i've had i've had support because a lot of say, people say that i'm a rich kid but if if you see the struggles that i go through my mom will come through for me you know she will support me but she's made me just stand on my own two feet and just say you're on your own like sort this out she'll only come in when things are are really bad and lately i think i've been managing on my own how important are connections <clears throat> they are very important connections have worked for me but i've had to build the network and i've had to prove myself i think it's so so important that when you're building connections you have to yeah you have to prove yourself but i just feel like in in the agricultural sector our sector is so small that everybody knows each other and um there are some people who are jealous and others who are happy for you and others who will push you and you know in that pushing of other people or i mean in that pushing of each other your connections then build up and you have so i can walk into a store and say hey mm-hmm. can you give me this on credit and because right. of my name mm-hmm. because of the connection they will they will, they will give it to me but they know their reputation but it's taken a long time to build to that, build it to build that reputation yeah. yeah so why farming i mean it's night and day yeah. compared to what you cardiology to and tomatoes man is it so, the red no <laughs> is it, is the, it the blood <laughs> There's a reason yeah. um, why I do tomato. And that's something that you need to understand as a human being is your gift. Mm-hmm. Um, my gift was never nursing. I was very unsatisfied in the nursing industry. Um, and when I got onto the farm, I actually became a tomato farmer by accident. It's it's not, it wasn't, it's like Jonah just being thrown and say, here you go. This is what you're purposed on earth for. Um, when I got to the farm, um my mom had had a small garden because then she t- had to take over from my dad because my dad was at that stage could not even run the farm he couldn't even write so she took over and she was still practicing full time so she had a garden and it was being run by a manager but then i saw a crop that you could harvest from more than 18 times mm. so i saw the lucrative part of of doing tomato And then I saw that the Zambian staple diet does not lack tomato. Zambians can go without strawberries, you can go without cauliflower, you can go without broccoli, grapes. You can go without grapes, you can go without spinach, but you can't go with a day without tomato. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I chose a crop that <clears throat> was number one. it was a need for the lower socioeconomic um, class of people that we have. Because the higher class of people are, are in small numbers. The bigger of my clientele are the marketeers and the people at Soweto Market. And because of that, I thought, okay, let me do this. The other thing is that I'm the type of human being who likes a challenge. I get bored very easily. You and I both. Yes. And tomato is a challenge. <laughs> It's a huge challenge to grow. It's it sprays every three days. It's research. It's fertilizers it's a lot of science behind growing tomato when i talk about nitrates and phosphates and sulfates and you know fungicides and insecticides people are like how do you know all this stuff it's because i like my brain to be challenged i always want to learn mm-hmm. so i've been learning about organic farming in tomato actually for the last one year and just trialing you know doing farming the japanese way so i farm a little bit different to everybody else um but what's I'm, the japanese way of farming I use wood ash. Wood ash. Yeah, wood is that ash. like a fertilizer? No, like no. malasha. Yeah, but what's the role? Is it a fertilizer? Yeah, or? it's a fertilizer. Yes, ah, and it's a okay. cleanser for the soil. So malasha is very high in potassium, hmm. which makes a tomato red. So how many, how many boxes are you producing a day with uh, <laughs> this Japanese way of doing things? <laughs> uh well, okay, it's 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 You know the manure wood ash style actually is is good but it's it also promotes a lot of diseases. The manure introduces a lot of bacteria in the crop, mm-hmm. lots of disease pressure. So we've gone back to doing the Omnia technologies that we were using before mm-hmm. where we use soluble fertilizer. We actually water the plants with with soluble fertilizer. But um what was the question again? Kwacha, good morning Zambia. My name is Chanda and I'm a voice actor in Abu Dhabi. I'm using my voice to promote Zambian history and culture like the mighty Mosio Tonya. 
Somewhere in Zambia, the Victoria Falls, one of the seven natural wonders of the world, locally known as the Mosiotunia, which means the smoke that thunders. Kabwe's Broken Hill Skull, the Kabwe Cranium, the Broken Hill Skull. Zambians, who was this ancient man and why should we care? For international standard voiceovers, reach out to me on email. Call me vocal at hotmail.com. Um, no, you can go. Then we can get to the number of boxes per day. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So um, we, I'm trying to get to a thousand boxes a day. That is my goal. So what are you doing right now? Right now, I'm only doing 300 boxes a day. Times 230. I, I liked what, two, two, three years ago, you would always uh, post at five, and I would always look out for your posts. Yeah. This is two, three years ago. You're yeah. making 69,000 a day. Sometimes I do, other times I don't. But but look times at the- Times how many days, seven days? Uh, no, I don't go to the market seven <laughs> days. <laughs> Maybe times four days. Times four days. That's 276,000 in, in a week. Times four weeks. That's 1.1 million. She's the millionaire tomato no, farmer, guys. guys. That's listen. it, farmer. <laughs> right now, I'm only harvesting um, 300 boxes yeah. per week because I'm, I'm, I, got, I had my field flooded on Tuzini tree. I didn't realize that we, we bought a dumbo. So we planted 100,000 plants, which was five hectares, and I lost everything. Jesus. That's a lot. Yeah, so we're just in planting phase now. So I'm only producing... 400 boxes a week and of those 400 boxes no i shouldn't say 400 but i think 500 because of those four, 500 boxes i send 100 boxes to namibia mm -hmm. there's a guy who comes to buy and and, and who do you sell the rest to so it's a market uh some go to ndola supermarkets i don't do supermarkets anymore i why cut not? them off why not Payment periods. Payment periods, and you get there, and they start rejecting the tomato. Like, no, this one has a scratch. Sorry, we can't take it. So by the time we come back, there's 40 crates that are back. Have you ever noticed Sorry, how? It's too much you, stress. Have you ever noticed how the mm. buyers in supermarkets? Yeah. They act like they shit roses. Yes. Yes. <laughs> especially, I'll tell you, oh especially the one at pick and pay. Yeah, they make me so. Jesus. Mad. The buyers. Oh my goodness. There's <laughs> one particular one. Yeah. Me, when they call me, Maria, do you have to matter? Sorry, it's fully booked in two, two weeks. Like, Damn. I don't want the stress of having ah, nah. boxes rejected. Yeah. You have to polish the tomato. Then you have to wait two weeks for your money. Then you get taxed. Then you have to rent their crates. You go to Soweto, cash on People the People buy day. on the spot, yeah. Me, by nine o'clock, I'm done. You've knocked mm. off with your I've cash. I've knocked off with my cash. In nine hand. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. My friends are still selling. They'll call me. <laughs> Madam, Tasiriza, 25 pin. Tifake kuti. In Nanku Bank. Mm -hmm. So I'm very strict with the bank. Very, very strict with the bank. I, I brought up the issue of two, three years ago. You'd always post uh, yeah. at five in the morning. Yeah, I still you're, post at five in the morning. Yeah, yeah, but your posts back then were a little particular with the calculations of what you're going to make at I the market stopped. that day. I, I'm, I'm actually coming to that. Yeah. Uh, can we start with why that was important? You'd always say, today we've done this many crates of tomatoes and tomato prices are this much per crate and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make... $25,000. Why was that important when you're starting yeah. out in tomato farming? Why would you post that? I would post them because I, 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 needed, I needed people to realize that um, we, we, we run the farming as a business. Mm. We, don't, we don't run it as a hobby. And then secondly, I would post it because there were many people who wanted to get into farming and I would get a lot of inboxes asking me what the real maths are. But then it got me in trouble. Um, which is why you stopped. That's why I stopped. I said, okay, if, <laughs> yeah. you, if people want to know, they'll come for a consult. And I, I, I was drumming up people now to, to come to me to consult. So I consult on a personal basis. Mm. I charge um, 1,500. I'm not cheap. You Where was the trouble know. from? Zedare? Yes. I, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> figured. Yeah. They were my case last week as well, so I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Don't come. They'll be like, okay, so you're making 25,000. Yes. Where's my share? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And they were just like, ah, but it's not reflecting in your account. So do you put it in your personal account? I'm like, no. well, you know, I get cash on the day. Sometimes we have cash in, cash out. We need to pay suppliers on that particular day. I need to buy, you know, bags of fertilizer we buy for cash. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we don't we don't go to the bank every day. Maybe there'd be days when it's just in out. 
you understand, mm -hmm. in out. Like mm -hmm. we cash and then I tell them I need this, 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 this from town, buy it. And then we, but we only buy our supplies like on one, one day a week. I'm trying to get organized with that. But every day my managers come to me, madam, we need this and this and this. You should, uh, you should be more like your dad. What? He would write down everything and organize everything like you said. Yeah, he, yes, I should. <laughs> I should. I try and write down, but um, yeah. I just run out of time. I'm so busy. I'm a practical farmer, so I'm, I'm always outside. So when did you when did you start with uh, Tunzi Farm? We started in 2017. Tuzini? Yeah, Tuzini. Oh, yeah. is it tu Tuzini? Tuzini. Yeah. yeah, Tuzini. 2017? Yeah. Wow. And you're already making a million. It's incredible. Uh, it's what? some serious hard work, though. It is it's serious a lot hard, of work. hard work. It's so a since lot you start, so work. since you st did you buy the farm? Were you were no. you renting it? My dad owned the farm. Remember? Oh right, yeah. yeah. I inherited that farm. Yeah. Yeah, but the other farms we bought. So how much does luck play in all of this? Because not everybody has got a dad that owns a farm. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, I I feel like wealth is a mindset. And um. Making money is a mindset. It's not so much about what you have. You limit yourself by yourself in what you think. Mm -hmm. I have had opportunities come to me, even if I wasn't a rich kid. I think I'd, those opportunities would still come to me because I had already envisioned what I was going to be and how many farms I would have. So it depends on what you feed your mind. And once you feed your mind, opportunity comes. But God will only bring that opportunity when you're prepared. And you know what opportunity plus preparedness means? Mm -hmm. That means luck. Mm -hmm. it, it's equals to luck. People say, oh, she was lucky. Yeah, now I hear you. Yeah, I, I've because got a I was prepared. I, yeah. be I believe you create your own luck. Yeah, you pre you create your own luck. Yeah. So for me, um, I even if I didn't have a farm, I think I'd still, in, I would still have gone out and bought a farm. Remember that I found the farm as a bush. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. did I develop that farm mm -hmm. to where it is now? <laughs> My dad always used to say, "The harder you work, the luckier you become." That's it. Yeah, Period. exactly. So, 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 what challenges? So, so, you get the farm, you you start the farm in 2017. What challenges did you face there? Um. So on that but on that farm, I think uh, the challenges I faced were disease pressure. That was the first one. Not your disease. Not my disease. Okay. I mean the tomato disease. Just checking. And then labor. Yeah. Labor is my biggest challenge. How so? We have drama every day. Every single day, there's drama on the farm. I remember when you came in, you, you, were, you were sharing a story about one of uh, your employees. <laughs> Handling humans has to be the worst yes. thing She ever. came in drained. And I was asking her why. It was like some guy got two girls pregnant. and yeah. He's a pimp. Two girls pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Has he heard of condoms? <laughs> no, that's their way of showing that they are men. I was right. trying to understand why... Yeah. Are these girls coming to the farm? They expected that you help out in a way. Yeah, I think he's, he's a know. manager. He's a manager. Yeah. He's a manager. <laughs> he goes. He goes to the township and is like, "I'm a manager." Yeah, he's, and he's girls a, will be like, Ooh, he's, "He's in driver. management." So he goes around with with my with our, with my Ford Range. Yeah, born. And he goes around <laughs> tomorrow. He's in the Amarok. Mm, yeah, born. Uh, and then he's like, "In a didn't drive over Z farmer." So now I'm you don't you don't know Z Farm. I'm I'm the driver. You see now, busy name <laughs> so dropping and all. So the girls are all over him today. My other manager was like, "Hey, this guy has many girlfriends." <laughs> I'm surprised only two chicks got pregnant. <laughs> and these are only two that you know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's in management. Hey, this this guy is busy. And all of them are busy. So he goes home with the car? No, 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 no. He parks the car at home and right. then he. Whew. But he has the car. Because imagine home. how much more damage there would be if yeah. it was at the car at night. Do you see this? <laughs> Do you see, again, the mic is flaccid. Maria, you mentioned that you actually charge 1,500 kwacha for a consultation. consultation. Yes. And I've, I've seen posts where you talk about, you know, encouraging youths to get into farming and all that. Yeah. But if you're charging that 1,500 kwacha, how are you helping out with youth empowerment, which you profess a lot <laughs> On your socials. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't charge everyone 1500 Right. Okay. I, I, I weigh up the options. I Sometimes I consult for free. I do. Especially okay. if a youth wants to get in, they're really motivated and they've got everything. I mean, I can't give them land, but I can help them set up their farm. So there are many young farmers that I've built for free. Like me coming next week. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're going to pay. <laughs> I should have so, it looks like money. He does. I, I shouldn't have spoken yeah. about the radio station too earlier. <laughs> yeah. mm -mm. Wasn't this interview like the clear money. one? What did I, 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 no. It was the clear one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't like told her what I do. 
I'm a youth. No, you're not a youth. <laughs> no, okay, I'll give you a discount. Like, look, at the end of the day, it's yeah. not about, it's about purpose. I've reached a stage where it's about purpose. For me, it's, I can go sleep on Tuzini 3, there are no lights, the toilet is outside, mm. like it's dark. Um, but when I look at my workers and the families that I'm reaching out to, my purpose is that I need to impact a generation that when I die, agriculture, I'll leave a legacy in agriculture that, you know, there was this lady called the Z Farmer who built That's deep. smaller farmers mm. and who reached out to so many people who didn't have the chance to go to school because I listened to my workers' stories. Their parents never had money to take them to school. And that's why they're not educated. And that's why. And now they're managing through to Zini Farms to educate their kids. Mm -hmm. So I've got a real big heart for less privileged people. <clears throat> I feel like, you know, if I could reach out to and just changing mindsets. These people have different types of mindsets mm -hmm. than us who are exposed, who are educated. They think in a different way. They believe a lot in witchcraft, you know, all, all, sort, all sorts of things. So. I think for me, yeah, it's purpose. Purpose, yeah, through yeah. my gift. So, so if you had a young person, yeah, trying to be a farmer, mm -hmm. don't have the resources, yeah. they have the passion, they have the drive, they're dedicated. Mm -hmm. are, are they are there structures that have been set that have yeah. been set up where people are able to take advantage of? Well, this is what we're discussing today. We had a very big meeting. I think it was even on news um, with the Minister of Agriculture. And, you know, I really emphasized to him that the people who voted them in were the youth. Mm -hmm. I said, personally, I went at 1 a.m. to vote for them. So, you know, they need to come up with programs. And he totally, completely agrees. But if a youth can even farm from a backyard garden, you have to start from somewhere. And the intention has to be there. And farming is a gift. It's an energy. People think that I'm a witch because I go in my fields and I meditate. It's, it's, it's an energy. It's, um, it's very spiritual. And with the farming, it's either you belong to the dark world or you belong to God. There's no in between. So if you go into farming with the wrong type of energy, I told my, I, I asked my client one day to do something for me because he kept complaining <clears throat> his tomato was small and he was being negative. You know, the law of attraction works so much in farming. So that's the same thing to Cleo. Cleo did, does not believe in the law of attraction. No, I believe in it so much. Do you Cleo know that I queen, do yeah. not enter my fields if I'm not happy? I have wow. to go back in my office. I have to sit on the floor. I actually sit on the floor to connect to the earth. I have to take off my shoes. Because this mortal being goes from dust to dust. So when I go and sit on the floor with my shoes off, I have to raise my energy vibration, become happy, and then go in my fields. And when I go in my fields, I have to speak to my plants. I have to tell them what I want to see. I have to speak to the earth. Remember the Bible says that you can have anything you want. With God, everything is possible. All you have to say do it. is say it. Mm -hmm. Ask of it and you shall have it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I totally believe in the Lord. Guys, Election. please, please. Ah, oh, come on, man. I love your energy. <laughs> I am you. loving it. You know, it's rare. You know what? No, this week, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the budget. You need a mic. No, no, no I'm, good. I'm good. What were you saying? Like we're really learning a lot from this. Uh, this week we have learned a lot. Sorry, my and this week my mic stand has been falling a lot. Martin, you're just like <laughs> grabbing the mic. You're just like holding it. You know one thing I've loved about this episode. Look at how you hold the mic. Hmm? Stop it, Elson. <laughs> I hold it like a sweet potato. Stop it. <laughs> I don't know why you're at pretending like there's anything wrong with the stand. You're just like grabbing the mic, huh? It reminds me of me. Hold it with both hands. <laughs> You know what I've loved about, I think the, the, the two episodes we've done, uh, uh, the clear one and this one, there's been a lot of mentions of the power of the spoken word. Yeah. And I rarely meet people that believe in the things, everything you've spoken about. I've got hundreds of books at home and what you've brought out today are things I also believe in. 
And I've really loved that you've spoken about, you know, speaking to things like plants, the power of the word, you connect with these vibrations yeah. that you have to be in. Yeah. Like there's certain deals I'll not go into if I don't, I don't feel a, a certain yeah. way. And yeah. I love, yeah. how much of that do you do? Like, like so much. Oh my goodness. I live yeah. it. I speak it. Um, If you've read Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws oh, of success, success, I have that book. Yeah. You've got that book, yeah. right? And I have read it so many times. And yeah. It talks about purpose and pure potentiality. Yes. Um, and this year, 2022, if you look at the, the numbers of the year, and, and I speak about it a lot in my videos, it, it, it signifies love. And if you're, not, if you're not working from a place of love in your entrepreneurship journey, 2022 is going to be a year when people are going to fail. Look at what is happening in Ukraine and Russia. It's affected the whole world. So from Corona, we went to Ukraine war. So because we went from Corona to Ukraine war. Preach. Right? What is happening is that there's a huge shift in the world. God is now just getting rid of everybody who is not operating. Preach. In so I come from a place where I stand up in the morning and I wear love to my kids, to my workers. I smile at everyone. People talk about my smile. Just smiling at someone is giving love because when you smile at someone and you give them positive vibrations, what happens is that it's infectious. Immediately it falls onto the other person and it brings up your self-worth. And I want to talk a little bit about self-worth, especially being a woman in farming. I was, well, I was waiting for that question. <laughs> <laughs> and it was coming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, when you're a woman, especially in Zambia, right and you're smart and you know what you want and you're assertive you get a lot of men who become intimidated and because of that because of our culture our culture doesn't do us any favors because a woman is supposed to be quiet you're supposed to not speak your truth you're supposed to just keep quiet when a man shouts or when a man does this and because i've raised my self-worth so much that is what is, that is what, that's, that is who the Z farmer is. I'm not apologetic that I'm divorced twice. I'm not apologetic that I bring, I put myself first. And I'm not apologetic that, you know, even though I'm chubby, I'm still proud of my body. You're and chubby? I'm, yes. Which part? This part, this, you know, know this right? African hip. No, that's not chubby. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not apologetic about anything. Because I understand who I am and I understand my purpose. And that's what I need for 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 every woman who is watching this live. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry, not this live, this podcast, is that you should you you need to put yourself first. That is oh, like Alicia Keys there. That is profound. Is it Alicia Keys? Put the woman first. Put. That's Jahim. Yeah. Even men. Men too. Yeah. So many men get taken advantage of. Oh, I want to do my hair. You know that you have a chick just using you. For money. Oh, shame. Yeah, shame. And <laughs> Or the kid is yours. Yeah, yes. Find out on the 18th birthday is not. Yeah. <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> 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 so we, we I, I, I love how profound what uh, you said is. It's, it's spoken to something deep inside me. Yeah. Everything you've said, especially that these are things that I believe in and hearing them from another person. It's rare in this country because a lot of times I bring these things up. I'm looked at like these are white principles or these are white things because yeah. very few black people talk about these things. You know what I mean? You know Law what? of attraction. A lot of people don't believe in that. Every day has a message. Do yeah. you know that? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Every single day has a message in it. Today, my message, when I went to ZNFU, before I do anything, before I go for any high level meeting or before I speak at any event, I have to ask God what message it is that I need to deliver to everybody else and how i do that is via meditation i meditate a lot and people ask what is meditation now there's christian meditation and then there's the devilish meditation and meditation is basically just letting go and you know staying in a quiet place and i usually meditate in nature or in my room but i like to meditate in nature because then i really hear god's voice and what he wants me to say so I say, what is the message today? So today's message for me is that I 
God is showing me the purpose that I have in the agricultural sector because today I had a meeting with a minister and he kept referring to me as Madam Zalumis is talking about horticulture and how, how we need. To, so I understand God has given me a message today about my assignment for agriculture. Mm -hmm. You need to start looking at any entrepreneurship journey as an assignment from God to wow. impact so many other lives. So I live like a monk. I don't drink alcohol. I don't eat meat. I, I, you know, I, I'm all about just, I'm, I've start, I've tried to start going to the gym, but it's been not hard. any kind of meat. I, um, I, I tried to eat chicken last week. It wasn't so bad, but there was a time when I was completely off all meats, just fish. Okay. Yeah. So I live a very holistic, I live like a monk. Yeah. I'm a monk. I like how clean your mind is. Cause when I said not any kind of meat, my mind took it. <laughs> I know, I know where you're going. <laughs> but I like how innocently you answered that question. <laughs> Because your head is in the gutter and <laughs> yes. stays there. Man, it lives there. Yeah. Maria is such a farmer, like 100. Are you able to put your boot on the table for a little bit? Are you able to zoom in on this? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like she would not take off her farming cap. Like for, she for come, nothing. For nothing. She came yeah. to the Hilton Hotel, where, where by the way we're recording this from. Came to the Hilton Hotel in her boots. Oh yeah, like and remind me, I would need to I would need to say um what the weekend specials are. Yeah. Otherwise Tato would she'll kill you. Castrate me. But you know, um Maria is you live your your brand. You've yes. labeled yourself a Z farmer. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where you are, you will dress up like yeah. a farmer. Yeah. And I've gone back to the earth. That's why I've started wearing chitenge. Look at you. Oh wow. So there's a reason why I wear chitenge and why I wear so when I dress up in the morning, yeah. God has to give me an instruction of what to wear. I stand at my wardrobe and God will tell me, get that jacket, get that T-shirt. I do not do anything without instruction. Um, my ears are open all the time to see what God is saying. Maria, um, there's an article that, you know, uh, puts you at a $2 million net worth. $2 million? $2 million net worth. Now, Before you answer that, Maria. Yeah. Hold on. Because I like her. I like to say that. Yeah. Maria, please think through this. Mm -hmm. We had Bowman on one interview. <laughs> we asked him how much his house was I worth. I actually, I actually <laughs> don't want to answer that because of Bowman. Okay. Um, I'm not asking if it is Thank true you. or not, but there's an article <laughs> that puts you at a $2 million net worth. Here's the question. You're not a you're not a flashy person, like no. yeah. No, Whether that net worth is true or not, yeah. ZRA, it could be, could or not it could be. not be. We're not confirming yeah. anything. Yeah. Anti corruption commission, it's alleged. This yeah. article could be a fake yeah. report. Yeah. In Donald Trump's word, fake news. Fake news. It could be fake news. Yeah. Now, with uh, a net worth that could or could not be two million dollars, but the fact is there's money being made. With this kind of an income, what, what are some of the smartest investments you've made that you can share with us that we can learn, you know, yeah. we Elson and I need to learn how to spend what we make because we've been a bit careless, reckless. Yeah. yeah. How do you spend a your money? A bit. We've been really reckless, bro. <laughs> yeah, we have. Wow. How, how do you, what, what do you invest in? What do you, how do you spend your money? So, so, so with me, what I do is that I don't like to focus on one business. I'm always looking for the next opportunity, mm. right? And... I want to look for it. So I do seedlings. That's mm -hmm. another business that is a, that's, that that has become a good money spinner for us. Seedlings, and I've I've done the whole from the seedlings to the chemicals to the crop. So I'm always looking. But the latest investment is I've built my house. I'm building at the moment. I'm at roof level. It's just the flood that has put me back a little bit. But I've built this house that has a gym. It's got a sauna. It has three bedrooms. Uh, it's got a guest wing. It's got a pool. Um, I just want to build my dream house. And once I finish building my dream house, I'll be looking for the next investment, which is real estate. So from agriculture... Are you going to be living in that house? But yes, I'll be living in that house. It's not really an investment then, is it? It is for my kids. Because when, when my kids come... Oh, well, they're there already. If they ever want to sell the house, they're welcome to sell the house. And then they'll have... They'll have cash. Mm -hmm. But some of the investments at the other farms, we've got cattle, those mm -hmm. are investments. Mm -hmm. 
um, I'm I'm trying to go into goat production, but I need to do it on. You see, the problem with me is that if I want to do something, I want to do it big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going into that, and then we're trying to build a multi processing facility on Tuzini One. Try boar goats. Yes, but I've found a problem with boar goats. What's that? Um, when they cross with the Zambian goat, the baby gets too big, and it's hard for the Zambian goat to give birth. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Um, yeah. The, the 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 good part about it is the average bull goat would would give you like 120 kgs, yeah. where the Zambian goat would most likely give you maybe under 50. Wait, is anybody else here shocked how Elsa knows about goats? Okay, I am. You're, you're also shocked, I right? Am. Martin, are you a goat farmer? Are you a goat farmer? Yeah, how do you know so much about goats? Fam. And especially the bull. The bull, the goat. I've never even heard of. I've never even heard of bull. What? Bull goat? Can I finish my point? Yeah. Good. So, the the Zambian goat Look is face, under fifty man. kgs. Yeah. So if you cross the two, yeah, you will get close to seventy. So if uh-huh. you get the cross between the Zambian and the boar, yeah. you've added nearly. 40, 50 kgs, which if a, uh-huh. a goat is being sold, it's, it's sold according to, to weight. Yes, to weight. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. I need to to go into yeah. that. But I've given myself three years. I'd like to go into cryptocurrency. Hmm. Yeah. That is one of, is, is one place where you put your money and you don't watch it. Otherwise, you yeah. die of blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch I cryptocurrency daily, yeah. because I, I strongly believe that what what i think yeah. is you would need at the very least eight different streams of income right yes yes i also believe that i believe you need eight different streams eight of, yes, yeah eight even 10 even I need better to, i need to be sleeping and money is just, just, just being made yeah it's just being you're just made. getting notifications yeah, of money just, going in yeah you're just you're just getting notifications yeah. and some of that maybe could be you know I want to I, I want to do real estate but for me it's commercial real estate. I don't want to go into flats. There's no money there. Mm-hmm. I want to do well my sister is into real estate so we talk about this all the time. And commercial real estate like you know offices, shopping malls, that's mm. where you get your that's where you can you see high returns, yeah. Of course, your absolutely. high returns exactly. Yeah. And then I want to have property in Australia. That is my dream. Mm-hmm. Me too. But <laughs> my kids should have each their own flat. How many kids have you got? I have two kids. Okay, you thought about it. Because I have other kids too. <laughs> <laughs> we shall not dwell on that now, shall we? Yeah. No, let's leave that yeah. alone. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I, I want to do a few investments, but I'm still, I'm still looking at the market because the Ukraine and Russia war has changed a lot of stuff. Yeah, it has, and I just feel like it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a dick swinging contest, really. Mm. Um, it's this is this is all Putin. Uh, yeah, that's power hungry. I don't care what anybody says, but I feel this is this could easily have been avoided. Avoided, yeah, true. You, you know, you yeah. know the crazy. You know the crazy part is this is how powerful China <coughs> is. You know, China asked Putin to hold off on invading Ukraine until after the Olympics. <laughs> I, I didn't even know about that. Say Serious, again. I didn't know about that. I yes. didn't hear about that. Xi Jinping called this guy and said, I know about the plans, but if you do that, it's going to overshadow what's happening in here. So chill. And as soon as the Olympics were done, boom, let's do this. Maria, uh, I'd like to get a little bit personal yeah. with you right now. Tell me. Let's talk about men. <gasps> uh, now, you, you are the type of woman who speaks her mind. And this, this is, you know, information that's out there. Everybody knows Maria speaks her mind. You're a little unfiltered. Yes. You speak your mind and unfiltered truth. Yeah. Now, you recently posted something on Facebook, mm-hmm. okay, uh, suggesting that men come to successful women like yourself for survival. Yeah. Firstly, uh, did you read any of the comments written by men under that post? And what were your thoughts when you posted that and uh, the comments from the men? What, what were your thoughts on Firstly, that? Firstly, let's yeah. go back to the history of, you know, just what happened and how we got to that stage. Mm-hmm. Someone posted a ring and I commented back. I didn't realize I was commenting from the Z Pharma handles. I thought I was commenting from, <laughs> from Maria. Maria handles. So I commented saying that I don't want a ring. I just want love. That's how this whole debate started. 
And then the person then wrote within five minutes, I had like, you know, the social media site going crazy. Mm. Then he wrote back the, 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 the author of the, of, of of the, the post, post wrote back and said, the Z farmer, why do successful women fear marriage? And I said that successful women fear marriage because, and I didn't only speak about, um, I don't know, I, I didn't only speak about just coming to, I didn't, I, I, I didn't speak about just coming to women. I said, if somebody has nothing to offer, not even his brains, then yes, then he's there for survival because successful women need a man who is going to be supportive, Yeah. who is going to bring his brains. I need brains. I don't care about money. I need brains. I need someone who will say, babe, let's sit down and do this. Let's do that. I don't need them to be, you know, in a, I don't need them to be a farmer, but I need them to have some sort of vision because a visionless man is a visionless society. I don't want a dumb man. I don't have time. Two divorces. Yeah. Is that what was lacking in the two marriages before this? No. Yeah. You know, I was dealing with my issues. Sorry. I was dealing with my issues. And one thing I want to tell everyone is yeah. that we attract our own shit. Sorry. Excuse the friend. Hey, it's a, po- it's a, it's a podcast. Feel free. <laughs> swear away. We attract our own shit. So I was low value and I attracted people who were low value. So, when you raise your standard, immediately the standard goes up and you attract somebody who is your standard. At the time when I met, I'm not going to mention names, including ex-boyfriends. This is not only my ex-husbands, including ex-boyfriends. The whole timeline. Yes, the whole timeline. And you know, my ex-husband one day said, you've slept around so much. I can't even count. I said, Namako Polo Basi Zula Nayavili. I don't even care. You know? Marco Polo Basi Zula. I'm not I'm not ashamed because we make mistakes. I'm not a I'm not a nun. So I attracted people who because I was so low value, because I didn't value myself, I attracted my own shit. And in me dealing with myself. And raising my standard and my value to say, I'm not going to get a villager. I'm not going to get someone who's not exposed. I'm not going to get someone who hasn't been to school. I need somebody who at least has got a grade 12 certificate. Minimum. You can't. A pilot, I always tell the workers at the farm, I said, a pilot who flies Cathay Pacific. I've got a friend. She's South African. She is a captain. She flies those four engine planes cannot go and pick one who drives a wheelbarrow from Soweto Market. I'm at levels. Levels. And I understand the level that I'm at. So I attracted my own shit and I blame myself, not them. It's levels. I had this argument with, with J-Rocks with the one time. Um, I said you don't choose who you love. Do you agree with that? You don't what? You don't choose who you love. No, you don't choose who you love. I, I, I totally agree. You can choose who you date. Yes, you can choose who you date, but you don't. But choose you don't who choose you who you love. Yeah, true. Yeah, and I say the same thing. I hear exactly what you what you're saying, and sadly, we live in we live in this society where uh, I I have no idea where this breed of men is coming from. Where we've got a breed of men that are leeches. Yes. That 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 deliberately target successful women. Yeah. Um, they don't bring anything of value to the table. Yeah. To the table. Yeah. I, ah, jeez, I don't know if people know where I live, but I know, I know, I know a guy who deliberately targeted my neighbor because of what she has. Yeah, I've been targeted so many times. And but do you know it when it happens? Yeah. It. Yeah. Can, can you see it coming? Yes. yes. I, I had this person in my life um, and the guy would come into my life and after two days would ask for money, right? He never had time for my kids because, you know, my kids come number one. Mm-hmm. 
He never had time for my kids, no brains, no vision. His ultimate goal was just to ask me for money. But then when it was time to provide for me, he would have excuses. He would have ex- he would have excuses. Then I found out from another friend of his that he did a deal and got paid and never paid me back the money that he borrowed. <laughs> So immediately he just said to me, okay, this guy is after me for money. I cut him. And I, I think up to now he can't believe it. I just cut, cut completely. But that's, that's not a loyal friend though. Snitch. Snitch. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, there's, with- there's, there's pretty interesting, this is not in the script. I don't know if it is or not. And I know Kalob will be, will be upset with me. Um, there has been a few scandals about you being with married men. Yeah. And one in particular, I don't know if he's Indian, some guy who was convicted of murder. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Who then got pardoned? Yeah. Are we talking about Matthew Mohan? And yes. Oh, okay. he, no, like me and Matthew, first of all, I don't like Indians. <laughs> <laughs> don't take it personal, Matthew. So that never yeah. happened? <laughs> no, it never happened. Uh-huh. We're still very good friends. Yeah. Right. We're just friends. Mm-hmm. And but you say I actually know his what? I know his significant other. Mm-hmm. And but really are, when when that when has that ever stopped anybody? No, 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 no. I no. Matthew is like a brother to me. I've helped him a lot in the agriculture sector and he's helped me vice versa. Mm-hmm. But we are just friends. We've been trying to get Matthew on this podcast for the oh, longest. I can get him tomorrow. We've been speaking well, then. Perfect. Yeah, we, we spoke yeah, a bit. Talk, yeah, let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk after this. I can't yeah. even, even call him now. Ha, nice, Maria. <laughs> Perfect. And yes. uh, and I really hope the whole of this episode ends without Elson cursing because we're trying to bring the ep- the president I, on I this episode. I haven't. So far, oh, so, so good, boy. Me, oh, so let me tell you, when we're trying to bring the president. The president yeah, we, we were so close <laughs> to, to having the president. the president. Yeah, he apparently watched an episode, and then the person who is our way in said, "Yeah, we've got a problem." I said, "What's the problem?" It was like, "Yeah, your language, bro." <laughs> yeah. was you like, cursed what? on the he the one you, episode the president he, watched. He said and you el- curse way too much, and I said no. But but look at it this way: the way that I'm going to be talking to I don't know Iris or Slab D, it's not the yeah. way that I'm going to talk be talking to the president. To the president. The president yeah. I'm not going to dress the same. Yeah, I'm going to we'll, brush my teeth on that day. Can 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 I can I can I tell you something to do? Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Please. Um, do you have a right? Do you do you ever write down your intentions? Do you have a whiteboard? Can I suggest? I've got a vision board. Yeah. Well, hold yeah, on. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, can yeah. you write your intention on the vision board? Intention of what? Of, of, of what having you want? The, president. the president. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Write it on your vision board and start working towards it. He'll come. Habakkuk chapter two verse two. Yes. Yeah. The who? Write it down. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Okay. Chapter yeah, two verse true. two. Write your vision down. down. Yeah, absolutely. And even yeah. speaking, you know, when when you were speaking about uh, when we we're talking about the law of attraction. Yeah. Um. I'm born again. And so I quote the Bible a lot. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Born again question or what? Hey, listen, you can finish that sentence however the hell you want. <laughs> yeah. You know the first phrase in the Bible is in the beginning was, was the word. There you go. I always believe we don't see God because God lives in us through our word. God damn yeah. right. That, that's my belief. I don't yeah. know if that's the accurate. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. It's it just, is. And, and here's how yeah. powerful. And here's how powerful the word is as well. You know, like God is so powerful. If you wanted to create whatever He created, He could have blinked, He could have snapped a finger, yeah, yeah. could have clapped His spoke. hands. But then He what? Spoke. 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 Well, we've, we've digressed and started Bible study. No, we did not digress. We have digressed. Okay, um, this is the Bible. This is gospel. We didn't digress. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we brought out another important point. There you go. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now turn to your neighbor and say, glory. Glory. Um, now, now Maria, I'll, be, I'll be asking Maria for, for tithing just after this. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you, think I, you think I'll just break out in Bible verses for nothing? No, I just tithed this morning, so. She tithed this morning. Not to me. <laughs> to me. Yeah. We need a plane in the we're, back there. We've been talking about uh, <laughs> money and women. Now, if a woman has more money than a man in the home. Yeah. Is that an issue? Yeah, is it yeah. an issue? I mean, what's wrong with her helping out and providing for that house like a man would do for her? It's is is it wrong? Issue. No, it's not. It's not wrong. And do you have the same respect for a man that you yes. earn more than? Yes. Yes. How do, you, how do you show that respect when finances are a major part of relationships? 
Okay, so yeah. let me just let me just expand a little bit on guang, that. Guang, guang. When you get home and you're a successful woman, it doesn't matter who you are. You need to understand your purpose as a woman. And being a woman means that the first and biggest commandment for a woman to a man is respect. Mm -hmm. And respect goes without saying. I, 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 I firmly believe in this, that even if a man is earning less than you, as long as he's making an effort and he has a vision and he's working towards his vision, Amen. it's different when a man sits and is waiting for you to bring bread home. Then I'll have a problem. John Soliobali. John Soliobali. I'll have a problem. But if a man is supporting you in terms of emotionally, intellectually, and then, you know, working towards his vision and sharing the little that he has. Respect comes, should be automatic. And once you respect that man, man remember that once you, as a woman, you give the man respect, what comes back is love. Automatically, you get love back because men respond to respect. A lot of women feel it's about sex. And I'm, I'm, no. I'm glad I'm hearing this from a woman. Oh, no. I think we had this discussion about a Would week you? ago. We're like, mm -hmm. the only thing a man wants from his woman is respect. You want to enter your home and feel yeah. like you're the man of the house. Of course. Regardless of how much yeah. you're making. You need to understand how the ego works. Yeah. Oh, that's another topic for another day. You should bring me on the show <laughs> and talk about ego. No, let's talk about it. <laughs> let's get into it. You know, a man is a natural hunter, right? Yeah. A man is a natural hunter. A man is, an, is a natural provider. That is in your DNA. That is who you are. Mm -hmm. So because it's in your DNA, when you, when, when you don't, when you, when you can't provide, you know, to, to, to that level, you feel that the ego gets bruised a little bit. Absolutely. And the person who, who is, you know, who, who is at the center of bruising a man's ego would be the woman in the house mm -hmm. or the woman in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if you, you know, if you, if, if you, if, if you have a man who's earning less and has an ego, you as a woman can respond to that ego. When you give them respect, you give them encouragement. What happens is that the ego immediately, it immediately just comes down a notch. You find people who are extremely insecure are either have either had disrespect from the time they were ch a child. This is a childhood thing. Some, some people you know, some people grew up in a home where they say, ah, this Kalitu fool or whatever. Yeah. That boy will grow up believing that. Believing that and having a huge sense of insecurity, therefore causing a big ego and wants to prove to the rest of the world that, hey, listen, I can do this. Because why? Because he's been made to feel small. Yeah, yeah. And and you know the other thing as well, uh the flip side of what you of what you're saying is sadly if you've got a man who deals with his own insecurities and yeah. he runs into a woman that is making si significantly more than he is, he already feels insecure. Yes. With who he is. Yeah. yeah. And depending on how the woman responds to that, that insecurity yeah. will then begin to manifest in other ways. You know yes. what I mean? He calls you, you don't pick up. Most likely you're in a meeting, yeah. and then when you get home, it's an issue. You know what I mean? I called you three times, you don't pick up. You think your job is more important than this? It's got nothing to do with the job, but their own insecurity. Yeah. <laughs> so if that's not handled well, that sort of manifests. What yeah, yeah, you're, you're so talking to me about, <laughs> about, <laughs> about my previous life. <laughs> right. You're so talking to me about my previous life. Um. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And and that's what causes you find someone who's earning less then starts womanizing. Yeah. Exactly. With somebody who is of their level. Exactly. Yeah. It has got nothing to do with you or what you have, but their own insecurity. This goes full circle to it the level issue circle. you're talking about. Like yeah. I really understand yeah. it now, yeah. Yeah. I really understand it now, yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about your mental health for a little bit? Sure. I'm not saying you're insane or anything. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> Some talk mental call health. Me insane. A lot of people have called you bipolar on the socials, though. Yes, yes, they have. They have. I'll come to that. I do suffer from depression, though. Let's talk right. about your depression yeah. now. A lot of yeah. women and men suffer silently in yeah. abusive relationships. Yeah. Now, why was it important for you? Because you you got public over these these issues. Sure. Why was it important for you to be open about your experiences in spite of public 
yeah. opinion? You know, when I look at uh, mental health as a whole, yeah, I look at mental health diseases as just a regular disease. Mm-hmm. Maybe because of my exposure, because I worked in psychiatry quite a bit, mm-hmm. um, just as a part-time job. I used to have two jobs, cardiology, and then I'll do a bit of psychiatry here and there. And these mental health issues sometimes are generational that people can't do anything True. about. And sorry to cut you off. I said exactly the same thing too yeah. on social media about how with mental health or depression or whatever it is at times is generational and it's her- hereditary. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I got dragged and people were like, no, it's not. No, it but, is. But I'll explain, I'll defend my point just now when you're done. Yeah. So when I look at the family that I come from and I'm speaking on my behalf, from my dad's side, all of them had had mental issues. My uncle, I remember when I was a child, used to come and he would put the whole sugar bowl of sugar in tea. He was insane, I, you know, but he suffered from all of them had some different f- types of mental. Yes, health. Yes, some yeah. form of mental health issue. And my diet, my dad had Alzheimer's in the end. Mm. But even when I look at us, you know, when I look at me, I suffered from depression because of a huge traumatic event that happened where I lost my child and I was never the same. I lost my child and then from losing my child, my ex-husband asked me for a divorce two weeks later. Was it related? I lost it. No, he said he'd found someone else. Jesus. Are you going, are you, are you going through therapy? Yes, I go for therapy. I, um, I haven't been for therapy for a while now. I, but go, I go once a week and I have been for the past eight months. Wow. How are you finding it? It's amazing. I, yes. I, He's been cursing less now. No, it's got nothing to do with that. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I feel like every single person really needs to go through therapy because in life we go through a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You lose a job. Yes. It could be something as small and as insignificant as that. And you yeah. feel, yeah, it's a job. I'll find another one. But you never really know the effect that it has had on you. I need to know you're a therapist because my therapist moved. She's in South Africa now. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to give you the plug. Please. You spoke of depression just now. Yeah. I really wish more people had had knowledge or would read more when it comes to mental health and, and depression because you tell a person that I suffer, which is the right term, from yeah. depression, and they say, but why are you depressed? Yeah. O- almost as though in their mind they, they equate depression to being sad, which yeah. are two different I things. Think, yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I wish more people would actually have a bit more knowledge or read more about mm. it. Because depression, I don't know if yours is clinical, there's, there's clinical depression yeah. where at times you go through therapy. At times people get medication for it, which well, I don't really advocate for. No, I, I used to take medication. I've actually been off my meds for a month now. Mm-hmm. And so far, so good. Um, I've had a few withdrawals here and there. But um, I haven't had therapy maybe for for about two months because my therapist moved away and I tried to have therapy with someone last week and we're just not speaking the same language. So I need you, your, your therapist. And I feel that every single entrepreneur, look, Bill Gates has a shrink. Mark Zuckerberg has a shrink. Everyone who is in entrepreneurship, who's in employment, who's in school, as long as you're doing something in life, you need a therapist. Absolutely. You, it's, going to therapy is not, it's normal. It doesn't mean you're insane. It doesn't mean you're insane. Which and is what it's equated to in this country. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly. And yeah. Because I've, people I've, don't understand. Mm, and I've had moments. I mean, I have moments where I can just lose it. I just shout. Mm-hmm. Ah, and, you know. Could that be the bipolar that people talk about? Because yes, you know, some people maybe. on social media call you bipolar. Yeah. Or point you out as a misfit because of your <laughs> failed marriages. <laughs> How how do you deal with this? <laughs> Social hard. media is 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 toxic. It's, yeah, it is. But how, how do you deal with all this? Okay, number one, yeah. I don't read all the comments. Okay. Then I understand the society that we're dealing with. We have a sick society. We have a society who don't even understand themselves. I'm sorry to say that. There are very few people who understand who they are and understand... Um, the culture and how it's limited us a little bit. And because of that, 
when the social media, we have a very negative society. I see how people comment on different articles. We have a, an angry, negative society who, who are constantly on Facebook and constantly don't want to see the other person's perceptions, but bring whatever it is that is in their heart or whatever it is that they are suffering from on that particular day and write on social media. So I don't read all the comments. But I understand the society that we're dealing with. And I, and, I, and I understand who I am. And to be great, you need to have a bit of dirt on you. And a thick skin. And a thick skin, yeah. And a yeah. thick skin, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so when you, lo- when you lost your child. Yeah. Your husband asked for divorce. Yeah. His loss. Yeah. At what point <laughs> did you realize that mm-hmm. this is depression that I'm suffering from? Because it happens to you and a lot of people don't yeah. identify it. Like they don't have a name. So my family are the ones who who actually realize that, no, there's something wrong. Because I'd sit in a room. A, a dark room. A dark room and be there the whole day. I could be there for two days. Just sitting there, not eating. Maybe I'd drink water and I'll just be on my own. And that's what I do. I shut off the world. I stop answering phone calls. Then I went to Fairview Hospital. And this was my meltdown. I went to Fairview Hospital the, where I lost my child mm-hmm. and I demanded for my patient file and I wanted to beat up the doctor. I was ready to sort him out. Wow. Because I believe that he killed my child at that particular time because I was going through that episode of mania. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe that's why people say I'm bipolar, but I got admitted to Fairview and then I got treated by Dr. Ravi, who is a doctor here, who put me on these antidepressants. And yeah, so far, that was a few years back. Okay. Yeah. But um, I've been okay since. Perfect. Yeah. And how long did you do ther- Did you go through therapy? Oh, I've been going for therapy for years. Right. Yeah. For I'm happy to hear that. For three, four years. But I haven't been to therapy for... You said two months or so. Yeah, two, yeah, two to three months because okay. my, my therapist moved. Now I'll give you the plug. Please do. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, do you feel Maria Zalumis and the Z Farm are like two very different people? Yes, we are. Very <laughs> different. I like that. We are. <laughs> what, what, what are the differences though? You know, when I get home, I'm Maria Zalumis. I'm yeah. a mom. You know, I, I, I am the support. I'm the cook. I'm the chef. I'm the one who plays chicken in the den. Like I'm not the Z Farmer anymore. I'm just Maria. And even with my family, I'm just Maria. With my friends, I'm just Maria. And when when the Z farmer comes on, I'm this farmer who is now thinking big, thinking tomorrow, thinking how do we scale up, how we do this. How, in fact, I've got three personas. Then I go to the corporate world and I sit on the Zambia National Farmers Union board and then I'm a different person. Like today, I was a different person in the morning. I was, you know, the ZNFU board director for fruit and vegetables, very corporate, you know, in my words, in my tone, everything. And then I get to the farm and I'm the Z farmer talking about farming, tomato, chemicals. And then I get home and I'm Maria. And then now you I'm talk about TV, movies, TV, Netflix. Are you inventing, Netflix? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. What, what are you watching on Netflix? What's the time about Anna? No? Say again. Inventing, inventing oh, Anna. Nothing catching up with that one. She's yeah. the female version of yes. the Tinder Swindler. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yes, exactly. And then I want to watch Anatomy of a Scandal. I haven't watched it yet. I, I'm, so I'm, I'm watching that actually. <laughs> my wife I'm told on, me about it yesterday. I'm she just finished third, it. Yeah. I'm on the third episode. I think it's a, it's a limited okay. series. Okay. Yeah. Pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm I know a very why you like Netflix it. Fan. You know why I like it? Yeah. Why do you think I like it, Kalenga? No, let's proceed, man. No, I want to hear this. Why do you think I like it? Maria's love because she knows. Another one that you should watch yeah. uh-huh. is check out uh, this documentary on Senzo Maewa. Okay. The, the South Senzo. African footballer who yeah. got killed. Right. Uh, have you heard of the name before? Yes, Senzo Maewa, yes. You know, I watched that. It has got five parts. It left me with a lot more questions than answers. I wow. damn near lost my mind. Wow. <laughs> but I think I've got a theory as to who killed Senzo now. What, what is it? Share it. So, so yeah. I think it's one of two people. I think it's, it's uh, Kelly Kumalo. Who okay. was the girlfriend? Or it's Kelly's sister's boyfriend. So they made up this whole elaborate story about robbers who came in. Yeah. They wanted to rob the place. And Senzo jumped up to protect Kelly. And Senzo was shot. 
then the guys ran away. But I don't think that's what happened. I think, I forget the guy's name, who's Senzo's sister's boyfriend, had an argument with Senzo, yeah. pulled out a gun, and shot him. You're spoiling it for me. I know, no, right? Hold on. No, it, it, that's, that's well, these are the questions no, no, that leaves you with. Oh, it leaves oh, that's oh, those okay, questions. Okay, yeah. I see, I so see. So the trial actually started a week ago. Oh, right. Finally. Okay. So, so it's currently running again. So I'm not spoiling anything for you because what I'm, I'm saying right now- That's his opinion. Is Yeah, that's just my opinion. But yeah. when you watch it, it's one of eight people. So that if I don't have. meditate at lunchtime, I watch Netflix because I have to zone out. <laughs> right. Ah, okay. no, so how often do you meditate? Uh, every day. I'd like to introduce you to, to Rashmi. She was talking about... Sorry. No, it's okay. Rashmi was talking about um, some emeralds that emit yeah. energy. I know uh, Rashmi. Yeah. I know her husband, Raj. Her husband? No, sorry, her brother. Yes. Raj. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I grew up in their house. You grew up in their house? No, yeah, kind of. I used to go there when I was a child. My sister used to date her brother a long time ago. The, oh, the same, the same, the same dude. Okay, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the shamans. Yes. Interesting. You know My mic is a little lower than yours, so. Okay. Cause right. I scream. Anywho, you just like a thick mic. Yeah, this one's thicker. Can we get to the trivia now? With that Z farmer, we can. We can? We shall. Uh, Maria, we always love to end our show with, uh, you know, some trivia about our guests. And right. yeah, for today's episodes, we have some, you know, some fun questions for Maria to end the show on a fun note. Not the Z Farmer, just Maria. Good. Maria, no, question one. If you retired yeah. tomorrow and wanted to start a different career, what would you do? I'd become a pilot. Oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> that, that's just... You'd, you'd go back to it. That's sorry. too what? No, if too I... Too simple? Yeah. No, no, no. Because I'll be too old. Uh, too old. Yeah, to be yeah to become oh. a pilot. You're only. But older. I've always wanted to fly. You're only as old as you feel, Maria. Ask the question you, again. You, you may not be a commercial pilot, but you can still fly helicopters and yeah. uh, stuff even yeah. after you retire. I think I think yeah. you're still yeah. old enough for that. Yeah, yeah. I would still love to. I would still love to fly. I feel like helicopters are the bikes of the sky. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, just pedals and I agree. Yeah, and just how they don't feel so safe. You yeah. are you are more likely to crash in a helicopter. That, I don't know. That's, that's your opinion. opinion. Yeah. Well, you should have asked Kalinga this when we had him. Yes. The pilot. Or Kobe. Oh, shit, we can't. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just wow. Maria, what, what is your favorite quote and why? Wow. Take it. Huh? Most favorite quote. I've got two. Mm-hmm. Bring it on. I'm just trying to get to know you. Okay, the first one is you are what you think. That's true. Okay. The second one is success depends on you. You does are really responsible does? for your own success. Yes, it does. Does it really though? It does. A little boy in Afghanistan right now in the uttermost rural remote places of Afghanistan who has no chance of ever knowing what a TV is, how would he be successful even if he wanted to be? Because Intention. I feel like your environment, I feel like your environment as well. I was listening to Warren Buffett the other time yeah. and he said, there's a couple of things that were not up to me. So he said, the fact that number one, I was born male. Number two, the fact that I was born white. Mm. Number three, the fact that I was born in the country that I was born in had nothing to do with me, but those worked to my advantages. Mm. Because had it changed, had you been a woman, black woman in Africa who didn't have voting rights or whatever it is, your chances of making it, regardless of the drive that you have, Mm. would significantly have been lower. The reason why Mark Zuckerberg is Mark Zuckerberg is because he probably had access to computers. At yeah. a time where somebody who is in, I don't know, the, the, the remote parts of Zambia, mm. who is as smart, doesn't have access or resources to the type of things that he does. It depends on levels, though. True. What I term success. Is not, somebody's failure. Yes. And then is not Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's success, if you understand what I mean. Uh, absolutely. So when I look at success the term, is subjective. Yeah, success is subjective, but when I say it depends on you, what I mean is that if you have the vision, I I, I am a firm believer that there is nothing impossible in this world. Mm-hmm. 
you can have and dream whatever it is that you want. Everything is a possibility. Difficult takes a day, impossible takes yeah, a week. Yeah, I've seen taxi drivers. There's a guy in Mumba, he used to be a taxi driver. He's mm. now one of the biggest traders of soya beans. The guy is so rich. Mm-hmm. He 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 trades in soya beans. He's not educated. Just took advantage of a situation. I mean, you know, opportunity came. He was prepared. Good luck. He's 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 made. Mm-hmm. So for me, if you want to be successful, it completely depends. Actually, it depends on two things. It depends on you, and it depends on God. Because mm-hmm. God is the one that brings the opportunities and. You need to have that vision. Once you have the vision and you practice the law of intention, I'm very intentional about friendships, intentional about relationships, intentional about everything. Awesome. So, yeah. All right, cool. Question number two. What is your favorite quote and why? Sorry. What is my favorite quote? That's what yeah, she just answered. Favorite quote. Answer. That's what she just answered. Oh, crap. I zoned out for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What is your favorite TV show and why? No, she didn't answer what her favorite TV show is. She said what she's watching on Netflix. Doesn't mean it's a favorite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Your all time favorite TV show and why? Friends. My all time TV show, like yeah. something that I've been watching yeah, for a long time. Yeah, 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 friends. yeah. You know what I don't like about Friends is there's no black people in there. <laughs> You're racist. There's. No- I want to see people who look like me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Maria looks at the humor and humor is no color. So she follows yeah. that in the show. Nah, right? exactly. nah if, I like if I'm going to gravitate <laughs> towards something, I want someone who looks like me. Actually, I like Modern Family too. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's no black people there. And too. I hear that. Yeah. So Elsa yeah. won't watch it because so of that. that. Australia really had a pretty. Yeah. I, major I, impact I, actually, I actually believe that people are not meant to live in Australia. Have you seen the kind of animals, the spiders, the snakes the, everything that you find in Australia? <laughs> ah. Everything there is designed to kill you. <laughs> the rain, the raindrops, when it rains, Rich. the raindrops are big. They can actually cause, they cause, they're so big. My mom came and she had the sore, sores from raindrops. From rain, right? Yeah, I, I believe people are not meant to leave there. <laughs> yeah. Maria, what is your favorite novel and why? Novel or book? Book a book. Let's talk about books, yeah. Oh, wow. I've got so many favorite books because I'm a serious bookworm. Ah, my favorite book is called... Oh, Fuck they have to be one. Yes. Huh? Fuck them. Fuck him. Oh, fuck him. Yeah. Fuck him. Yes. Huh. That's my favorite yeah. book. And, 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 I've and read who, it like 10 times. And who's him? Yes. yes. <laughs> no, Fuck who? Him is a book on how to, to fuck treat... A man? No, how to treat a man in a relationship. It's actually a great book. So how do you treat Why him? nice yeah. girls finish single. That's fuck hmm. him, and then it says why, why nice, nice girls, girls finish, finish single. single. So, what's some of the stuff that you learned from the book? Um, I've learned that um, when you're when when you're when you're dating, don't give up your body so soon. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, like don't have sex with him so soon? Yeah. I don't believe in that. <laughs> I, I would. I, I don't believe in that. Elsa, you, you wanted the first do night. Not, do not spread yeah. that ideology out there. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something that's the the longest relationship the longest relationship that i've had Uh was six years her and i had sex on the first date very first date because i'll tell you something when a man meets you in his mind is already made up he's already made his mind up as to what he wants from you if it's sex doesn't matter you make him wait for six months. Because guess what he's going to yeah. do once he gets it? He'll go. He's going to go. Yeah, if you give I it to him you. on the first date, and even, even in his mind, he's already seeing you as like, you know what, I want this woman. <laughs> Whether he gets it on the first day or not, he's yeah. not going to go anyway. Oh, well. So please change that mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, are you I a morning agree. person or an night owl? A morning person. Ah. So you, do you, you, you want to add, add something on the book? Oh, yeah, yeah. The second rule of yeah. uh-huh. fuck him is um, don't be too available. I agree with that. As a woman. I, even as a man, too. No, actually, it, when it says don't be too available, it means still don't give up your life for a man. Hmm. Yeah, I, I You understand? Life has to continue. Like the way I farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't give up my life for the person that I'm with. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree. I, with I, that. I, I, he respects me, though. Who? The man uh, in my life. 
that one in my life. Oh, you got somebody in your life? Yeah, I do. Was I too late? Yeah, you're late. Sorry. Damn it. <laughs> I'm off. Oh, well. <laughs> I've got a good song on my dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know if, his, if my e wallet has reached him yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, tell you. Yeah. You said you, you're morning person or night owl. Which, which I'm one? A morning person. Morning. What What are your morning rituals that maybe we can learn from and succeed like you have? Um, the first thing I do when I wake up is pray. As you should. I say good morning to God. Sorry, let me just move this closer. Okay. Yeah, I pray. Um, after I pray, I I have to meditate. Okay. And after I meditate, then I go to the gym. But it's not every morning. Some mornings I just go straight to the farm. It depends mm. on what I'm doing on that particular day. Mm -hmm. But I think meditation and um, I have to drink a cup of coffee in the morning. That's a, a standard procedure. That's a sta and I don't compromise on my coffee. It has to be <laughs> I, I totally agree with it. And I hate instant coffee. Yes, That's I hate garbage. it too. Yes, I hate I, it I too. I like Kasama coffee. Not, not that I'm plugging I anyone here. Yeah, I, I hate it. it. I really and enjoy Kasama coffee. I used to have a Nescafe uh, coffee machine. Right, the coffee machine, right? Yeah, the, co the George Clooney one. Yeah, I know it. I know yeah, it. Yeah, but I, I messed it up. So I have to drink Jacob's coffee now. So, so I blog a lot. Okay. And I've got I've got one piece that I wrote called The Little Things where I speak about that. Really? That if, yeah, if you are going to have coffee, yeah. you are worth having the good stuff. The best instant coffee and etc you know i look at people i yeah. judge people based off the type of tea or coffee that they, they, they consume <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah definitely Serious, eh? roses or nothing and, and so, an, so what, 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 where do we well place what making, i drink i drink kasama coffee th th there's an oh, art as well yeah, when you're making coffee yeah. as to what excellent goes first coffee. the sugar excellent the coffee. water yeah. etc yeah you know that right you just don't chuck stuff into the into the cup no you don't drink yeah. rubbish me as far as i'm concerned my body deserves the very best yeah because that's your meat vehicle yes exactly right you might as mm. well have the best version of it yes absolutely so coffee meditation prayer reading the bible going to the gym you sex. have to look after your body your mind you your I well being okay that you, is you agree with that for the body yeah sex is very important it's therapeutic yeah, oh it's so therapeutic it is yeah <laughs> I'm not gonna get into the details. On that sexual <laughs> note, Maria, it's been real. Like, yeah. we, we've learned so much, and I've, I, I love how you did not hold back on things that you know. Um, a lot of people say Maria holds back on talking about oh, her yeah. past relationships and things like that. You just, you gave us you. Yeah. Yeah, you totally. gave us you. This is the first interview where I've actually given my everything. Wow. You. And the fact that you actually don't do interviews. Yeah. Has been such an honor for us. Thank you so very much. You Thank laid you. yourself naked before us. I Not did. literally. Ta -da, you run. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on Instagram, that's that podcast. ZM on Facebook, that's that podcast. Uh, where else are we? Uh, YouTube, where you're watching us from, of course. Click the subscribe Patreon. button. Kevin. Patreon. We're pushing Patreon as well. Remember, for us to keep the show going, and especially Zedians who've said, uh, love the show so much, you can actually contribute a little something to the show. Uh, Patreon. We should have a link uh, yeah. on our Facebook or is it YouTube, uh, Instagram? No, no, we, we will we'll post it in the description. Oh, yeah, yeah. Check the description for a link to Patreon. So a little goes a long way. We have to pay the camera crew. We have to pay the sound crew. We have to, you know, get some of our drink. Uh, this is exactly why food. Sally was talking so damn much, because now he feels he's part of the show because we don't pay him. Yeah. Speaking of. S Sally's our camera uh, visual guy. So speaking of. Yeah. I damn near forgot this. Wow. So we had the Hilton. Yes. I said this. Very beautiful room. 18th floor. Yes. We, we can see the whole of the yeah, soccer from here. Give me the room. We just, can easily just, just for the night. Talk to me nice. Me and my, you know, significant other. See, now that's where you lost me. <laughs> right day. <laughs> when you said end, right day is where you lost the room. <laughs> no, I'm so I'm anyway. Playing. Of course, of course. Yeah. So there's the family packages. Yeah, so there's family packages. So essentially, so I'm so I'm gonna give you what the rates are. So these are weekend specials. You know, you remember that Brady Fuzzy song? I'm not weekend, weekend special. Weekend special. But in this case, right. you are. So Standard room. How much? How much do you think a room, a standard room at the Hilton, would be? <sighs> Five grand. You'd be surprised. How much would you pay for a standard room at the Hilton? Yeah, about five grand. Hmm. Four. I've got very rich people here. A thousand five hundred. One five. One five. That is cheaper than the hotels in Indola. 
Cheaper than good lodges. Some lodges. Her lodges yes. are charged that much. And you get that at Hilton. 1,005. Yeah. For a hill. I think I'm coming here next week. As oh, you should. Now, I'll give you a free room tonight. Um, Thanks. And so that's for two people. It's not even for one. It was two people, two with, people. Breakfast with breakfast With breakfast for two. What? Yeah. Beautiful pool area outside. Wow. Yeah. Which which overlooks Cairo Road where you see peasants walking up and down. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to get dragged for this. <laughs> I'm going to get dragged for this. Yeah. Um, there's a family room. Two adults, two kids. You got two kids, innit? Yeah. Yeah, and two so adults. Yeah. You and your wife. Your wife yeah. is an adult, right? Uh, last I checked, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, need to, I, need to, I need to check NRC. <laughs> Maybe it's got football USA. <laughs> so, so perfect. Yeah. You, your wife, two kids. You would pay 2500 Wow. And... It's breakfast for all four of us. Right? Yeah. Wow. 2,500. Next weekend, we are here. People. We are here. Wow. And a room like this. That's you got a, your, your own little lounge. Is there a stove in the back there? Yeah, there's you a stove, a, there's a fridge, there's a stove, full fridge, kitchen. Two TVs, amazing bathroom. You'd pay 3,200 for that. On that note, this show is brought to you by the Hilton and Call Me Vocal, a voiceover artist in living Abu in Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Actually, this episode is ending with his advert, so... Yeah, listen to his voice. It's it actually bit. pretty good that people end with his voice. Yeah, listen to this. Really, yeah. Kwacha, good morning, Zambia. My name is Chanda, and I'm an international voiceover in Abu Dhabi. I can be your voice for fashion. When it's time to get the job done, Southern Gents presents the double-breasted pinstripe of excellence. Your voice for cinema. All these years, you lied to me, Alfred. The Batman, only in cinemas March 3rd. Your voice for beverages. Introducing the Jupiter Cocktail. Shaken, not stirred. For international standard voiceovers, reach out to me on Instagram at callmevocal. Yeah, so that was real. Perfect. That was really We did a plug in the camera. So, no, but wait first. I need to take a picture with this. No problem. Are you able to we'll do that. sit down just for a sec? Uh, Are you able to guy. pass me my phone? This is the one? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's your charger too? Yeah, that's my charger. Yeah. Oh, you can get it, yeah. yeah.